I'm here to show you how to cover books with leather. I'm gonna show you two different types of leather covers. One is gonna be with reclaimed leather and the other is gonna be with a vegetable tan leather. And this is a really simple process, but the materials will be slightly more involved. We're gonna need leather, which may be a challenge in itself. In the case of reclaimed leather, this is from a jacket. I've used shoes and I've used wallets and bags and old gun holsters. I had really kind of covered books with a broad spectrum of leathers. The main thing that you have to look for is that it is supple and not rotted. From there, you can kind of make magic out of anything. So you'll need your leather. I use mull. This is a book binding material that strengthens the book as you open and close it and use it. It's basically a kind of a starched, stiffened cheesecloth. So you can always use your vintage textiles if they're strong or use some kind of fabric. It doesn't have to be this. I use antique textiles again to do the lining. As I've explained in other tutorials, I love to find use for old materials that are still completely durable and add a real charm and quality to your new project. Another thing we'll need is headband material. I will show you how to make a makeshift headband but unless I'm sewing a headband, I always use store-bought. You're gonna need a hammer and glue. You can use Elmer's. I use this Lineco pH neutral book binding adhesive and a heavy duty pair of scissors for cutting your leather. And you will need a big heavy book to serve as a book press. I like to use art books. So you've got a nice flat book to work with. And I think that's it for materials. So I made these little books this is everything that's covered in tutorial two. These are coverless books with the uh, antique textiles as the cotton or linen tapes. And the next step will be to glue the spine and to press it in a book press or under books. So the first thing I'm gonna do is square up my book, even though it's stitched together and there's linens, it could still wiggle this way and that. So I just wanna make it square as possible. And then I'm gonna add some glue to my spine. Don't put too much glue on because you don't want it to sink into your book pages and seal them together too deeply. I tend to put it on and then I squeeze my pages together and this allows me to squeeze out the excess. Make sure that you get all the nooks and crannies. Make sure you take the excess off of the edges here so that when you put it under your book or in your press, it's not gonna stick. I'm just making sure it's squared up once again and I'm gonna put it in my press. I took my books out of the press. They're nice and dry. It actually took a while because it's warm today. I'm gonna round the spine. I like to feel that front cover shift. So you can start to see that it just becomes a trapezoid. I'll do one side and then I'll flip it and then I'll do it again. And at a certain point, you'll start to get that shape, that roundness that you want. So this one is now ready for headbands and the mull. So I'm gonna show you a really quick way to make your own headband. This is headband material. You can order it online. We got ours from Talus. And you cut it into small pieces and finish your books with this. Here's what it looks like on an uncovered book. Just cleans up the signatures and gives them a unified look. Here is what it looks like with a leather cover. And then I'm gonna show you this really cool headband. This is a completely different process. This is hand stitched over cord and it is stitched directly into the book. So we're just gonna be making this. All right, I'm gonna make headbands out of this fabric scrap and this three-ply waxed linen thread. It would be better if this was four-ply. I don't have four-ply, so 
I'm gonna try to make a headband with doubling up my three ply waxed linens. I wouldn't suggest doing this with anything really lightweight. So I'm gonna put the glue onto my fabric first. The glue is definitely gonna go through, so it would be much smarter of me to have put this on a piece of paper or something, but I just wanted to have it straight on the wood. So I've glued my fabric. Now I'm gonna put my pretend six ply down. I'm going to try to finagle this piece into being somewhat straight. So because it's twisted, it has a little mind of its own and its intentions are different than mine, but let's see. So I'm taking my little headband and I'm just coaxing her to stay straight. Now I'm going to just adjust. I've glued my fabric, I've put my thread in there and I'm going to let these two dry and we shall return to them. Here's my, my book binding glue. Again, Elmer's Works. It just has to be a flexible glue. So I'm gonna put the headband on. This is a little stiffer, so I'm just gonna hold it down for a little bit longer and add a little pressure. I'm gonna press this headband with the fatty bit of my palm. If any glue pops up on the top, I like to take it off the book and put it on my hands. All right, so when I cut my headbands, I cut them a little bit shorter than the measurement across because by the time you wrap the cover in leather, which is what we're, we're usually doing, if it's a little bit beyond your pages or just up to it, it's gonna scrunch a little bit. I don't like the way that looks. So I cut mine a little bit small and when it's wrapped, you won't notice it. Okay, so my spines are rounded, my headbands are on, and my books are both ready for mull, which is, again, just something that is going to reinforce the spine. This is paper and in time, and depending on the use, I'm definitely hard on my books. Um, paper will tear. There's kind of no getting around that. So what I like to do is strengthen it as much as I can. And all this nice, flexible glue will help strengthen the book. So I'm just pulling it nice and tight. I'm working that mull and that glue into the spine. It's just a starched kind of cheesecloth so it really once it gets wet it becomes really malleable and you can do with it what you please and have it follow the contours of my spine okay so I'm gonna let this dry this is a really nice example of an old book that I didn't put that mull on so it doesn't have any extra support I mean the book is still I guess pretty substantial and pretty held together by those linens but the mull really adds an extra bit of strength so I finished adding my mull and my headband and my book is pressed. And now I'm gonna add this vintage textile along the border. I'm gonna take my strips and then I'm just gonna glue along the edge. I put my hand in here and lift up the page so that I don't get glue onto my book block. A lot of people put a piece of clean white paper in there. All right, I'm gonna check the other side and see that I have enough and that it's straightish. Snip. So this is something that I started doing back in the days of the Black Spot books. That was my company, BW, before Walter. And I started doing this when I found Flossie's fabric in her abandoned house. This is a really fun way to add some character to your edges. I'd also like to encourage you to try to discover things that you'd like to do in ways that you'd like to make your books look uniquely yours. I just love the little detail that it adds to the book and it always feels so satisfying to me to find uses, not only for materials that I love, but for scraps that would otherwise have gone in the trash. So now I'm just gonna sit this aside and let it dry and then I will put on the leather cover. So my book is dry with these antique textile linings. I just wanna look and make sure that there's no pieces that are going a little too far, perhaps over the headband, and trim them down. The most important thing to know about gluing a leather cover onto a book is that you're gonna be putting glue on, on the front and the back covers, but you're not gonna be putting it on the spine. If you put glue on the spine, then it will restrict the ability for your book to open like this and lay flat. And 
not only will it make it more restrictive, I guess once the leather breaks in and the book does have a little more movement, it's gonna look all shriveled and I can show you once we're done with this, the resulting movement that will happen in your book. All right, I'm gonna cover my little book with this leather. And this leather was a jacket. I was in Montreal years ago at a craft fair and a guy came up to my booth wearing this jacket. It was duct taped together. It was really a mess. In the end, we traded a journal for the jacket. And I made a lot of books out of it. And I'm surprised actually that I still have this, this piece here because it was a really fun leather to work with. So I'm gonna glue on this other side. And if certain areas, if you take a little longer like I am to glue and certain areas have dried, make sure that you cover it because you don't want any bubbles in your leather. If you don't have glue in certain areas, you will have a little, a little bubble, a little pocket. And those tend to be annoying throughout the length of the journal use. It's nice to get really close to the edges so that they don't detach. Now I'm gonna take my book, pull my leather tight. And you don't wanna to pull too tight that you're stretching the leather and kind of deforming what's going on. So I just do a nice snug wrap around. And from here, I'm just gonna do my kind of rough cut where my lining sticks out past the book. And there. So at this point, you could put a book on top, you can put it into a press, whatever you may have. I have this big art book and I'm just gonna center it. If you don't center it, your book may end up being a bit of a wedge. So I like to center it so I have an even amount of pressure going across my book. All right, and now I'm just gonna put my hand under here so I can assure a nice amount of pressure. So I'm lifting my cover and I'm gonna pull it away to press it down. In here, you can see how there's that little gap. Just reach in here and press so that your fabric has a nice clean connection with this leather and let it dry. Okay, I'm up to the last step of covering this book. So now I'm gonna trim with my leather scissors and I'm gonna to cut to the outer edge of this textile and it's gonna be far out. I know that that's farther than I need it to be, but I'm just gonna start there. So I'm removing any excess so that I can see what I'm doing better because at this point, I'm all of my lining up, I'm determining just by eye, I'm not measuring. So I've taken off the excess and now I'm just gonna trim closer. And I generally like to gauge the headband as being my guide. So I'm gonna cut it a little higher than the headband. So I'm moving closer and closer in toward my book. Um, I'm just gonna work on making sure this is as straight as I could possibly make it. And it's consistent from one side to the next as far as my distance away from the book itself. It is important to keep in mind that as a lot of the, the slightly wobbly lines and, and small variations, which are inevitable in handmade things, will work themselves kind of in and out as you use the book. You're gonna see more marks and more patina, and you're also gonna see some of these edges soften to what you're doing. All right, so I finished my trim and I've rounded my corners because I really like to have a nice roundy corner. So when you're using vintage leathers, you're gonna definitely have its, depending on what the life of the piece was, it's gonna have its direction, its tendencies that it's gonna wanna do. So there's like a, a wonky part here where it kind of flares out, this side's a little neater. So there's gonna be some, some variation. So my first book. So I promised that I would show you the movement. When you don't glue the spine, it allows for that leather to pop open and give you movement. 
So leave that gap. We're only putting glue here and here, and that's really, really important. You can see that nice black and white detail in the inside and the character of this leather on the outside. They look really lovely together.